All right, gang, welcome to the Tuesday webinar. I've got some really great uh, things to share with you today. Um, I'm gonna cover some of the new changes we see on the dashboard up here in the menu, and then we'll dive into some of the, um, the marketing tools here that includes most of the profit dial stuff, and I'll just show you where you can find your settings there and where you can kind of build out your workflows, and then we'll actually build a, a couple of workflows together, and maybe we'll get into a call flow if we have time. Um, if you have questions, by all means, enter them into the chat. And if you have you know, questions for future webinars, you can actually submit them prior to um, Tuesday webinar time and I'll, I'll bring them into the fold and, and actually address your questions then. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have questions as we go, just enter them into the chat and I'll address them as best we can. And uh, so without further ado, um, you probably have noticed that there's been a change here on the dashboard, the menu is different. And so we've been uh, rearranging some things and we're actually really close to releasing a new client manager system for REI solutions. And so uh, the client genie, the, the client manager tools that we've been working with, you know, a lot, all that functionality will still be there, uh, but we're actually growing the, the client manager to include um, some additional functionality and tools and, um, you know, plugging in some of the holes and based upon feedback that we've had from users and things like that. So you'll be able to, you know, create a, a property record from the client record and things like that. So. Um, we'll, we'll demo that as that release is, um, is rolled out and it'll happen before the end of the year. And so the next, you know, several webinars over the course of through December, uh, we'll be addressing a lot of those changes in the client manager. Um, you also see, you know, the, the menu has changed, uh, you know, everything was under tools previously. Um, dashboard was recognized as home previously, um, but now it's called the dashboard. Um, what was sort of all layered under tools included, you know, the client genie and tasks, your task manager um, for managing your, your team to do's. And then um, deals here is kind of where you're going to find the property pipeline and the property finders tools. Um, and then of course you can do a property search as well. And the marketing tab is going to actually reference a lot of the, the profit dial stuff um, was previously, you know, listed under profit dial and tools, but um, but you'll see that it's all listed here under marketing and, and then the web tools, of course, consist of the domains, websites, landing pages, um, the web forms and opt-in pop-ups tools for those pages as well. And then, uh, of course, under resources, we still have the, the animation and content library. Uh, we have a, a property alerts where you can actually set up your alerts for, for properties that you're types of properties that you're looking for. And, um, and there's a really cool marketing budget calculator is a, a really great tool for reverse engineering your budget based upon your goal and the number of leads that you need to, to get to achieve your goal. And so we'll actually do a, uh, probably a webinar on that maybe next week, or we'll include that in the next week's webinar. Um, and I'll, I'll put together a, a training video that you can find under here. If you have questions, you know, you can come to the support center, you can check the training library. And of course there's all the, the webinar replays as, as well. So all of the support is under here. Uh, you'll see a place for, um, recent uh, property searches. So you'll be able to pull those up. And then here's the, where your notifications will be turning up. And you'll actually, as you get calls and as you get web forms completed uh, or text messages, you'll actually see a notification here um, for those. And so, you know, as those leads are rolling in, you'll actually see that notice there. Um, so let's dive into you know, profit dial here and let's go, you know, just real quickly, we'll go into our inbox here. And so if you're trying to access your profit dial settings, you probably, you know, it was previously lined up over here, but now you're going to actually come to this gear icon, you know, which is sort of our symbol for our settings. And you can actually click on this and it'll open up your settings here where you can build out your numbers, you can add extensions, you can uh, upload your recordings for greetings and stealth blasts. Um, you can set up your notifications. You can establish your keywords uh, for text capture campaigns or, or text flow campaigns. Um, you can set up your tags, um, establish, establish cutoff times uh, for you know, your flows so that they're not um, being executed in off hours. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot of functionality here in, in your settings. And, you know, as, as it was before, it's really easy to, to come in and add a new phone number. Um, it's really easy to, to add new extensions for that number. Um, you can actually click new, select the phone number that you're working with, 
and then you can actually add an extension there. Um, the recordings again is pretty simple, you know, to upload a, a greeting or a stealth, you know, stealth blast uh, message, you know, something short and sweet that can be used as a follow up. Um, you know, and it's very easy to just click add new. You can, you know, use Voxer or another tool to capture your MP3 and then upload it here. Uh, or of course you can record by phone. You can actually call in and, and record over the phone, get your, your greeting loaded up that way. Um, notifications. Um, so this is a, a new addition. And what you can do is you can come in here and you'll see that there's a, a primary email address already associated. Um, you can add the number and we can click here to update that. And so this is coming from the account record. Um, and so this is actually under here, my account, if you wanted to go to it directly. And right here is the mobile number that we'll use to get notifications. And so um, you can put your phone number in there. And again, just go ahead and update that. And now if we go back to our marketing inbox, we go to our settings again, we come to notifications. We'll see there's a, a phone number in here, right? Where the notifications can come to. And we'll just go ahead and, and come through the system here and we'll start to decide, okay, what do we, where do we, we need a notification for, right? Certainly incoming calls um, to any of the profit dial numbers. You can actually specify which numbers and whether you need an email or a text notification. Um, you know, incoming text messages, we now have a notification available for that. Um, and so previously, you know, we didn't have the text notification or, or you know, when a text message was received in the inbox, uh, but now we've got that available. So you can actually decide if you need an email or a text notification when a text message is received, right, on your, your particular tracking number. Um, and then you can also receive a notification when tasks are triggered, right, or assigned to you, um, or when a, a task is overdue um, or, or due up. And so this would be, these tasks would be assigned as part of workflows or as a part of call flows. And, you know, as we know, there's a bunch of functionality in the workflows and call flows, and we'll, we'll get into that here in a minute. But as those workflows are executed, they will trigger tasks that are going to turn up on your, your global task list up here. But you can decide, again, if there's a notification that's appropriate. Um, maybe you, you have a text message notification going out or an email notification when the, the, due, um, the task is due. And... Um, says here, you know, the task notifications will be sent the morning before it is due and the morning of the due date. And so, you know, again, we can go ahead and save changes here. And the settings would be saved then on the notifications. Um, additionally, you can have keywords. You know, we talked about this in a previous webinar. Uh, if you go up here and you search um, the video replays, you can find a full webinar on creating keyword campaigns. And so, you know, depending upon what type of um, contact or, or client you're try, trying to market to, you can actually create a keyword campaign for buyers, you know, centered around the, the keyword home. And so if they text in home to this number, it'll trigger the workflow. Uh, or free, you know, maybe you want to trigger a, um, an easy way for property finders to opt into the system and to access your landing page so that they can start to get into the uh, property finders portal, right? So you can actually recruit bird dogs with a, a, this campaign. Or again, maybe you wanna just do something, you know, for, um, you know, just easy for distressed sellers. You know, so this is keyword sell for just motivated sellers. You know, so there's definitely a variety of campaigns that you can build. And then once you've created the keyword campaign, you actually just market this, you know, text cash to this number or text sell to this number. And anybody that texts in the keyword will get the, will trigger the text flow. And so we'll, we'll actually show you some of those workflows here as we go. Um, here's tags. Tags are super important. You know, we've talked about tags previously. Um, there are different tagging conventions you can come up with and different tagging strategies. Um, you know, one that I've referenced before is the no lead left behind tag. I use as an umbrella tag for all of my seller suspects. So anybody that just, and I captured a lead um, and I had a conversation with them. If it didn't go into the point where I was setting an appointment and writing an offer, I would just tag them as no lead left behind. So I can just roll in all of these into my, you know, my 
uh, first of the month or my 15th of the month follow-up. And so I can actually do a text blast to all of my leads that are tagged, no lead left behind on the first, or I can do a stealth blast, uh, ring this voicemail to each of them you know, or the whole group uh, all at once on the 15th of the month. And so again, that's just one example of the type of tagging um, conventions you'll come up with. And you'll see there's a lot of these tags that are already established in the system. And then there are the custom tags that you will add as you go. Um, and then cutoff times, we mentioned this, you know, you can actually specify um, where you want to cut off the automated follow-ups. And so I might shift this to like, you know, 6 p.m. because I'm working, it, I'm in the office from 8 to 6. And, you know, I don't want to actually bother people after that hour. They're most likely at home or at dinner. And, you know, I'm going to keep it to business hours. And you may have, you know, different, um, different desires, you know, based upon when you're available or when you want to um, cut off your automated follow-ups. Um, but the eight to nine window is, you know, where it's established um, because most states, you're not going to be allowed to, to do anything after 9 p.m. And in some states, it is 6 p.m. And you can actually um, check your state for um, compliance laws. And if you come to marketing and you go back to our inbox here, you'll see there is actually a, um, a place for compliance. And this is just referencing to, to the rules and regulations for when and how you can do text blasting and text messaging and things like that. And um, it's different state by state, but you can definitely just kind of peruse this. If you have any questions about it, you can, um, you know, you can actually check with uh, an attorney or, you know, if you have any real concerns, but right here is the state by state compliance. And so you can just kind of go in here and you can see what hours are allowed. So if, if I'm in Michigan, for example, and I'm able to do this from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., right? And so now if I want to adjust my, um, my cutoffs accordingly, I'm actually going to come back here to my settings and come to my cutoff, and I'll actually shift this to, to 9 a.m. because that's, that was the, um, the regulation here for Michigan. So I've got it now set from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and that would give me plenty of a large window for you know, being able to trigger my automated follow-ups. Um, and so going back to our marketing button here on the menu, and then just looking at this drop down here. Um, again, we come to the inbox, we're going to see leads that come in are, are here. We'll see the, the voicemails here. Again, we still have the opportunity to, to sort based upon, we can display, you know, matches based upon what date it was received. Um, you know, so you can actually filter through your inbox. Um, and then over here, we've got opportunity to configure the table in different ways. And so, for example, if we want to hide, you know, whatever the profit dial number, and you don't want that in the table, you can actually hide that, that column right there. Um, so you can kind of reconfigure your inbox a little bit if you want. Um, I definitely highly suggest keeping, you know, the seller name available or the, the contact name available, um, the number, call duration, what you need your actions. Um, call received is important. So, you know, you're not going to trim it down too much, but, you know, you could eliminate a column or two if you needed. Um, and then you've still got all of the functionality, you know, at the top of the menu here in Profit Dial. You can create a blast, whether it's a text blast, a ringless voicemail blast, or an email blast. And we've actually got the email function now from uh, the contacts inbox. And so we can specify, you know, which marketing profile it's going to come from. We can specify which contact, if it's an individual or a tag group. And we can actually, you know, trigger distressed seller. We can do a single email. We can use an email template. If we're going to search, um, we'll call it, let's see, oh, that's it. Um, Let's see, let's search seller. Oh, okay. So manage email templates. Oh, denied. Okay. Well, this might be one of the, the pieces that they're still working on. We'll come back to that. Um, but as you can see, we're, we're going to integrate the email blast. This will be dialed in really soon and part of the workflows. And so you don't have to have action sets and email autoresponders carried over in the form of action sets from the client genie all the way into the, the profit dial call flow. We're actually going to be able to 
have a step in the call flow, in the workflow that is the email blast or the autoresponder. And so, you know, the system is going to be much further integrated and functional in that way. And, and so you'll actually be able to focus your, your attention on building workflows. That's going to be the primary building block in the system is the workflows. And so, um, and so, you know, there's the functionality here of, of sort of identifying the calls, identifying the, the voicemails. You can look at the text message inbox here. Um, you can actually, you know, select any of these leads and you can trigger an action. So, for example, if we want to do something with this particular call, we can uh, opt them in or out. We can trigger one of those flows, one of those all important workflows. Uh, mark the uh, email as read or, or the voicemail as read. Um, archive the call, you know, once it's resolved and clear out the inbox. And so there's all that functionality there still. And um, additional functionality over here where you can, you know, access all of those same functions and, and even view it in the client genie. And again, that's going to be, you know, shifting into the new client manager tool soon, but, um, but it'll be the same sort of access point there. Um, and so this is, you know, coming from the inbox here. Uh, again, you can immediately access your, your text blasts. If you want to take a look at that, there's the outbox there. Um, you can see what's been sent. Um, you can see what's scheduled. Same with the ringless voicemails. You can see what's been scheduled or sent. And you can actually shift between the ones that are manually created versus the ones that are created via flow. Right? So any of these that were, were uh, set off as part of a workflow or call flow, you, know, you can actually sort those out and identify those. Um, and um, coming through here again, the, the ringless voicemails, the text blasts, we look at those. Um, so now we're getting into the workflows and the call flows. Uh, call flows are obviously the flow that is triggered when somebody calls into a particular number, and you can see we've got a, a postcard campaign flow currently attached to our, our demo number. And um, you know, there's different types of flows that you can create, and we've covered a lot of these in different webinars. And so definitely don't um, hesitate to go into the webinar video replays here and search for call flows and you'll get a couple of results there that would be worth watching. And, and one of them that's really you know, useful, again, is this postcard campaign flow. It's got some automated pieces in it. Um, we'll just take a quick look at here at, at this one. And um, so, for example, you know, it'll have smart routing at the top where you can identify first time and repeat callers. And the reason that's important is because you can actually branch them off in different directions and have them resolved in different ways. And so the first branch here for first time callers will be tagged as a direct mail lead. They can go to the 24 hour greeting. And now there's a branch here. If they leave a voicemail, they can, it's an important you know, message um, because somebody's demonstrating that there's some motivation and interest in your services. So you can actually get a notification on that and then you'll get a task uh, added to the task board and you know that will help you to call them back and have that all important live call with them and set the appointment write the offer and then no voicemail um, is you want a little bit something different to happen so if they if they get to the greeting but then hang up for whatever reason as they're listening to it you can have a delay of five minutes and a text reply say hey sorry I missed your call you still have a house for sale we can help no matter conditions or situation Click here to get a fast cash offer in 24 eight hours. Um, link to the landing page and then thanks in your name because so it's a personal message from you. And so this is automated. You don't have to send this manually anymore. You can put this into the call flow and it'll be triggered automatically five minutes after they hang up. Um, and then a delay of a day after that and then maybe a ringless voicemail. It's like, hey, I had your number on my desk. Um, didn't want you to fall through the cracks. I can get you an all cash offer if you still have that property for sale. Uh, I'd love to know what the status is. Thanks. You know, and, and just, uh, and then give them the, the number to call back, include the same phone number, the same tracking number so that when they do call back, boom, they're recognized as a repeat caller. They get tagged with a stealth mail call back and then it forwards to a live answer, right? And it forwards to your backup, you know, and, and um, maybe this is somebody on your team. Maybe the next one step is somebody on your team, or maybe you have a third party service like Pat Live or some other um, responder with their script and they can actually um, you know, enter that lead into the, your system through a, a web tools landing page you create for them, you know, a little internal use landing page. 
Um, if you like that idea, I have, a, I have a webinar replay on that, on how to create the, the Pat Live uh, web form, and then you know, set that onto a landing page and, and share that with your responder for, um, you know, for use as their script. And so that would be the second branch of this particular call flow. And you know, I, I demo this, call, this particular call flow once in a while because it's really useful and powerful. And I, I you know, would love you, for you to be able to, to put this together in your system. I can help if you have questions, shoot me an email through the support center here uh, or give me a call and we can you know, set up a time at callwilliam.net and I'll jump in and help you put this together. Um, in fact, any, any part of your setup, if you, you know, get hung up, you can go to callwilliam.net and schedule a time with me um, or you know, shoot me a line through the support center here and I will get back to you and uh, we'll, we'll tie it together. Um, and so, you know, going back to our, our marketing access to all of our profit dial tools here, um, the call flows are really cool and powerful. And again, these are related to the calls that come in on a number. What happens to that caller? Is it rooted to a live answer, forwarded to, you know, your, your team? Is it forwarded to a, a greeting or a voicemail, voice message? Um, you know, and then what happens after that? You know, what sort of automated steps do you want to include based upon um, whether or not they leave a message or whether or not they're, you know, first and second time callers, you know, so there's lots of neat stuff you can do. And if you just click on add new call flow here, you'll see um, the forwarding, the greeting, the voicemail, tagging, action set, which, are, you know, carried over from the CRM, smart routing, which you could stick at the top of your flow, uh, ringless voicemail, which is the, the stealth blast, you know, um, the interactive menu, if you want to, Use that to actually strategically outline um, the, the, the flow for different uh, access points. You know, dial, uh, press one for the sales department, press two to you know, schedule a showing, you know, that kind of thing. Um, text replies, you know, which are again really useful and something that you can automate as part of the call flows. Delays so that you can stagger these appropriately. Um, tasks so that you, your team will know to respond when there's a, a voicemail left or when there's some other critical step in the process. Uh, notifications, which are critical and important. And then, um, you know, you can stop flows and so that you can, you know, stop and start flows based upon um, certain, certain triggers. Um, pretty soon, you're going to see a couple other functions in here, one of which will be emails. So you'll actually have the full range of um, communications tools, right? The you know, text replies, the ringless voicemails, and also the sets of emails and uh, email templates that'll be available, autoresponders. Um, so there's, you know, it's definitely a few more uh, growth steps here in the profit dial setup, and um, I'll share that with you as it comes a bit available, uh, as it comes about. And yes, I'll go from there. Uh, call flows, we did that. Now workflows. Now workflows were previously called text flows, but it was a little bit confusing because um, people thought that they only worked um, as triggered by text messages. When in fact they kind of had a dual, you know, function. They were they were definitely triggered by keyword text, um, and so you could capture a lead with a, a keyword and then trigger an appropriate response in the flow. Um, so for example, you know the cell keyword flow here um, resulted in action set, a notification, a delay, a text reply, a delay of three days, and a ringless voicemail reply. And so this person that texted in, you know, is going to get um, a reply from you automatically and actually a second reply three days later. And, you know, the idea is that you can actually, you know, create a message here that's going to result in either a, a link to your landing page or maybe a call back from them um, or, or maybe even a text reply that would allow you to better understand how you can connect with them or what they might need. Um, and so that's just one example. But, um, you know, the text flows, you know, as they were referred to, um, that is one way that they could be used. The other way that the text flows, now called workflows, could be used, is you can actually trigger from the inbox a series of events, you know, based upon how you want to resolve a lead, whether you need 
an offer to be written and you want to set up a task there or you want to set a notification that the offer is going to be written and going to go out and then maybe you want to have another task to um, analyze the property and run the comps and then maybe you want to have you know another task to um, you know have the the set the appointment um, you know and in this case let's see let's look for an example here um, one of them that we had was a no lead left behind short-term follow-up and so this could be if you attempted to call back a, a voicemail and they didn't pick up but you want to trigger a workflow so that you don't lose track of that lead right because you call them back once based upon their voicemail and they didn't pick up um, and of course you can leave them a message and you might end up playing a little phone tag but even in the course of that phone tag you don't want to lose track of that particular lead so you can, you can trigger a no lead left behind workflow and it would include a tag so that they roll into your long-term process there uh, maybe an action set that includes you know the email autoresponder or some you know a source and a category for that particular contact um, then a delay maybe 30 minutes and a text reply hey sorry mr. call I would love to discuss your situation I believe I have the right solutions to your dilemma uh, visit my website at here and um, let uh, give me a text back to let me know how I can help um, you know, something like that. And then a delay of three days and then another text reply. Um, a delay of seven days, a ringless, ringless voicemail. Um, and this might prompt them to call back, you know, a particular number that would identify them as a repeat caller. You know, so there's different ways you can strategize that. Um, but again, this would be the type of workflow that is triggered when you get to that point that you've attempted to call somebody back after they left a voicemail, they didn't pick up, and now you want to further resolve that lead. So, you know, if you're working out of your inbox, what you would do is, you know, you'd come to this lead and you, you tried to call this Corey Seller back and he didn't pick up. You know, you still want to get a hold of him, and you come in and you trigger your workflow. And you just come in and say, no lead left behind, you know, seven days short term follow up. And then you can choose which number it's coming through from if you have you know, multiple tracking numbers you're working with, uh, which I highly recommend because then you can create unique call flows for each number. You can, you know, with the appropriate steps and, and tagging. And then you can also really track and analyze your marketing campaign. So you have, you know, one profit down number for PPC, one for direct mail, one for, you know, your business cards and, or door hangers, one for, your website, you know, and then maybe a general line for other purposes, you know, so you could have, you know, up to five or six numbers really easily. And, and just to give you that extra functionality and um, just a really great way to organize your system and, and identify which leads are coming from where and which campaigns are working and, um, and then how to focus your energy on those campaigns that are working ultimately. Cause you know, as investors, we're always testing, we're always, you know, doing, um, different marketing strategies and you want to ultimately dial it in so that you can figure out what's working in your market and you know which postcards are working which letters are working um, and so forth so um, there's more to share here you know we'll, we'll get into building some more workflows together um, if you go to the training library video replays and you look up text flows um, you'll get a few of the the webinars that we've put together on creating text flows you know they're now called workflows because again I think calling them text flows kind of left some people not realizing there was all this additional functionality you know so for example somebody calls and leaves a message and they're angry you don't have to call them back you can just trigger the text flow with all the appropriate text uh, tags or excuse me the, the the workflow with all the appropriate tags um, you know stop flow here and you can choose you know to opt them out um so definitely you know it takes a minute to start to sort of compile your series of workflows i'd be happy to help you and give you um you know a series of workflows to start and actually help you plug them in we can get online together again you can go to callwilliam.net schedule a time with me you can shoot me an email through the support center here just send it to support at epic pro academy and i will get that email and i will send you a video we can jump into 
you know, building together. And then uh, give me a call if you need. Jump into the webinar next week. Um, you know, and, and just keep me posted on how I can help. And uh, I'll have much more to share next week. Thank you.